Everyone welcome here from Fratton Park where today I'm delighted to be joined by a man who's seen just a few things over the years here at Portsmouth Football Club. Colin Farmery, pleased to meet you. Yeah, pleased to meet you too, Patrick. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. Well, Colin, let's start off then with where did your love for Pompey begin? Oh, that's a long question and a long time ago as well. I mean, I, I, I first went to Fratton Park in 1970. So my, my first game was against Walsall in the League Cup. Um, it was a, a, a game that my auntie and uncle who lived in Gosport took me to. Um, I remember sitting in the G section of the North Stand, which is where I was, I was kind of like um, um, doing, you know, got my first love of Fratton Park. We, we won the game 1-0, Norman Piper scored the winning goal and I was hooked ever since. Well, I understand as well that you're the chair of Pompey History Society. Tell us more about them. Uh, well, the Pompey History Society, to be honest, it was a group that kind of came about around about 2014, 15, when we were community owned. And, and I was working for the club at the time. Um, and, and I was given this project to do called Pompey Voices, where we were working with a, with a company in Manchester to try and come up with a, 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 a Pompey History timeline using the memories of supporters. Anyway, that, that, that kind of project you know, went, went a little way down the line, but didn't really come to, to full fruition. So uh, but basically out of it, though, we got together a group of volunteers who were interested in the history of the club. And we kind of like, you know, instead of me being the Pompey Voices Project, we, we thought, well, we call ourselves the Pompey History Society. And since 2016, our role has been to build up this organisation to kind of like to do two things, really. One, it's to preserve the archive of the club. Um, and secondly, to share it with the public. And we actually became a charity in January 2023. So we've been a charity now for, for um, you know, a good, good sort of 15, 16 months. Uh, and yeah, we, we, yeah, we've done a number of projects. We, we did a project called Champions of England, where we um, uh, did an oral history project. We got some funding from the Heritage Fund to interview fans who remember Pompey when they were, when they were champions of England in 49 and 50. We, you know, we produced a book and we've now got a, a permanent exhibition you know, commemorating that at Fratton Park. Um, we also, we bought replica trophies, the first division championship trophy we won in 48, 49 and 49, 50, and also the third division trophy from 62 and 83. The History Society has paid for replicas of those that are now in, in, in the club boardroom. Uh, and we've got a number of other exciting projects coming up. We're just launching ourselves as a membership organisation. Um, and yeah, we want to try and get as many Pompey fans who've got a passion for the heritage and history of the club to get involved with us. Well as someone from a journalistic background you've written several Pompey books in the past but has been the editor of the 125th anniversary book arguably been the most rewarding? Yes I think that's prob prob probably a, a fair comment to be honest I, I mean you know I remember I was involved with the first book I was involved in actually was the 100th anniversary book but centenary edition back in eight, uh, 1998 and I think of its time that was a pretty good effort to be honest I think we, uh, we really really did the club justice that that, that year but I think when, when, when this project was first kind of like mooted probably about 18 months or so ago, uh, I went back to Bishop Sprinters, Gareth Roberts, he's the CEO there now. And I think, I think Gareth and I, when we were talking about the book, you know, I think we both agreed that we wanted to, it to be a signature edition in that way that, that really did this magnificent club's history justice uh, and also was going to be something that, that, that people really wanted to you know, keep as an as a, as a heirloom or what have you in that way. And, and I, think, I think, you know, it was a lot of hard work by a lot of people. You know, I had, I had, I had five or six uh, core authors that were working on it three or four that kind of you're doing more kind of like, you know other other more different roles we were pulling together all the stats the photographs and so on and so forth so it was a real real kind of team effort the designers did a did a marvelous job on it Ellis Hampton in, in, in particular um, and I think when the books arrived from the from the uh, you know the binders when when they arrived sort of like last September and we actually got them out and looked at them I, you know I, I think we all felt that we done the project justice um, you yeah, know we took the decision for it to be a limited edition of 1898 to mark the year the, the club was founded and and, and you yeah, know that they, they sold out in no time so that you yeah, know they're, they're not available for sale at the moment but the good news is is, is that we're bringing out a paperback so uh, this summer uh, we're going to be revising it and updating it we've had we've had one or two little errors that, that the people have pointed out typos and stuff that we're going to we're going to correct but also we're going to put in this season's uh, stats and the story of this season for both the men's and the women's team. And uh, we're all keeping our fingers crossed that we're going to have an exciting story to, to tell and add a, a significant new chapter to the club's history.
Touchwood at the moment. The uh, men's are sitting nicely at the top of League One and the women in National League South. And of course, a success as well for Portsmouth Amputee FC with them being EFA Premier League and League Cup champions. Are the club hoping to invest money or more money into the, uh, the other two teams as well as the men's? Yeah, I think so. I think you know, you, Tornante and, and Michael Eisner have shown that they they're committed to this football club on all on all its kind of like levels. Certainly, yeah, you know, the club sees women's football as a as, as a growth area. Yeah, you know, and we've seen the um, yeah you know, the attendances of, of, of PFC women on, on the rise as well. And the, and the yeah you know, the the inclusive football. You know, obviously Claire Martin down at the Pompey in the community manages those kind of schemes and and. They are that you know they bring additional kind of like you know glory to the club and kind of like you know profile to the club and I I, I think I think at the end of the day you know, they are they are all part of the wider Pompey family and we, we you know we want to make sure that we celebrate them and that and that they that they that they contribute so much to to what we're trying to achieve here which is to build a you know a football club that's rooted in in its in its city and its community and that and that yeah you know, we want to play at the highest level possible whatever team that it is that's playing. You mentioned there about Claire Martin and Pompey in the community. As someone then who's also had a long and successful career in education, you must be very pleased with the progress they've made and none more so than the soon-to-be-completed John Jenkins Stadium. Yeah, well, I mean, Claire does a fantastic job down, down at Pompey in the community and, and, and the John Jenkins Stadium was a, was, a, was a terrific project that, again, I know, I know from talking to Claire, it's not, it's not been a, a straightforward road to get there. You know, kind of COVID certainly kind of intervened and made it, made it a trickier project than, than, than it might have been. But now that stadium's in place, what a fantastic community facility that, that, that they, they've got to exploit. It's a terrific project that will hopefully only strengthen what, what, what Pompey in the community do it's it, it's it's a it's a magnificent job that they do and we were delighted as part of the one two fifth that um there was a a charity concert by the Portsmouth and philharmonic orchestra that i'm also involved with that we did to raise funds for pompey in the community as well and, and part, part of that included the you know the the composition of a special overture for the club so so yeah we've done some exciting things during the one two fifth and and, and it was great to be able to celebrate the work that claire does that sounds absolutely fantastic. Well, finally then, Colin, we've seen the, the wonderful work that Michael Eisen has done over the years here at the club and obviously making Fratton Park now a stadium that's fully usable again. But at 20,000, is there still a long-term plan to expand the ground to, to compete with clubs of a similar size? Yeah, well, I think Andy Cullen's gone on record that, that, that yeah, what, what we want to do in the longer term is, is develop the North Stand. Um, yeah, we, we've done the, the groundwork literally by kind of, yeah, putting in the lower tier of that. The next phase will be to demolish the upper tier of it and then, and then, and then to build, build a, a new stand, a new upper tier of the stand behind that. Um, I mean, in terms of getting that project over the line, you know, th there's a number of things we've got to kind of consider. There's, there, there's, there's obviously you know, the access room from Fratton Station has been a, you know, a long running kind of thing in that way. But you know, the mood music seems to be that, that that's moving in the right direction. But also you need the success on the field. So with Portsmouth hopefully about to kind of you know, get back into the championship, you know, this season all being well, we're then going to be in a position where, where Fratton Park's capacity at 21,000 is going to be tested every week. Um, and that's where you provide the evidence that there's the demand to, to increase your capacity. So I think, I think at the end of the day, as always with these things, you know, kind of, you want to be building something off the foundations of success in that way, and 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 if Fratton Park's full, well, there's a case case for making it bigger. Well, yes, indeed, and we'll keep our fingers crossed for all the Pompey teams for the rest of the season. Well, Colin, it's been an absolute pleasure meeting you here today at Fratton Park, and uh, well, that's it for us here today at Portsmouth Football Club. So thank you for watching, and tune in again soon for more PL Presents.